The museum. The museum was very interesting. There were so many things in the museum that I would need more time to really see everything. There were clothes from the past. I don't know how people wore some of those things. They look like they would be uncomfortable. I like to wear my jeans. There were things from wars. There were bullets and cannons, and even uniforms from the soldiers. I don't think that war is a good thing, but it is good to remember the past and honor the people who died for your country. There was an old fire truck at the museum. This fire truck was pulled by a horse. There were some very old photographs of the firemen putting out fires. There were rooms in the museum that were set up like an old house. There were antique irons and sewing machines. The women used to clean the clothes with a washboard. There were no modern appliances back then. I'm glad that we have electricity and modern appliances. The things that we have make life so much easier. There were mummies from Egypt at the museum. I was fascinated by those. There were artifacts from the Indians. There were arrowheads and cradles that the babies slept in. I tried my best to see everything, but it was almost impossible. The museum is a good place to learn about your past. I tried to imagine my grandparents using some of the things that were on display at the museum. The police. My mother always told me that if I was lost, I could go up to a policeman, and that he would help me to find my way home. I never did get lost, but I always remembered what my mother told me about the police. I think policemen look very nice in their uniforms. I see police officers drive by in their police cars. In my town, we even have police officers on bicycles. Policemen and police women have a job that can sometimes be dangerous. They have to catch people who break the law. Sometimes they have to chase people or try to calm people down. To be a police officer, you need a lot of training. It's important to be able to deal with people effectively. A police officer came to our school. He had a police dog with him. The officer showed us how the dog could track down criminals. The dog was very smart. He could even find things that were hidden. Criminals sometimes hide things that they don't want the police to find. The policeman told us that he and his dog were partners. His dog lives at his house with the policeman and his family. Sometimes I see police cars on the side of the road. The police stop people who are speeding or are not wearing their seat belts. The police officers warn people or give out tickets. Sometimes they even have to arrest people. Police officers are just doing their job when they arrest people. Some people need to be arrested and put in jail to make it safer for the rest of us. Pretending. I like to pretend. I like to make up things that aren't real. I use my imagination. I was pretending that I was in a time machine. I set the date for a prehistoric time. I turned on the time machine and it buzzed and whirred and spun madly. When it stopped spinning, I opened the door and stepped out into a very thick jungle. I listened carefully to the sounds of the jungle. I could hear strange animal noises and the leaves were rustling. I wasn't sure if I'd gone back in time or had just landed in a jungle somewhere in the 21st century. It didn't take me long to realize that I had indeed gone back in time. A very strange bird-like creature with a large beak flew overhead. I had never seen anything like it in my life.
I took a few steps out into the long grass and ferns. I didn't want to go too far away from my time machine. I heard a noise over on my right side. There was a man who looked quite different from me. He was dressed in an animal skin and he carried a big stick. I didn't want him to see me, so I hid behind a tree. He didn't speak any language that I could understand. He grunted at someone who must have been in the distance. Then I felt the earth shake beneath my feet. I heard giant thumps on the ground as the floor of the jungle shook. The man in the animal skin began to run. I saw why he was running. A giant dinosaur appeared above the tops of the trees. It was bigger than anything I had ever seen. My heart began to pound in my chest. It was coming toward me. I ran toward my time machine and jumped in. I set the dial for the 21st century. The machine whirred and buzzed. My time machine landed in the 21st century. I got away just in time. A baby. My aunt just had a baby girl. We went to the hospital to visit my aunt and to see the new baby. My aunt was feeling fine, although she was just a bit tired. She walked with us to a big window that had lots of babies behind it. She pointed to a crib with a baby in it. The baby was wrapped in a pink blanket. We all said how pretty the baby looked. I couldn't believe how tiny the baby was. She was asleep, so we couldn't see her eyes. When the baby went home, we went to visit her. We heard the baby. She was crying. My aunt said the baby was hungry. My aunt had a baby bottle full of warm milk. She fed the baby with it. The baby was happy after that. My aunt patted the baby on the back until the baby burped, and then the baby fell asleep. I held the baby. I looked at her tiny fingers and tiny toes. I was very careful with her. She opened her eyes and looked at me. I spoke to the baby, but I knew that she could not understand me. Babies have to learn to walk and talk. My aunt changed the baby. Babies wear diapers, so they need to be changed often. The baby has a lot of toys, but she is still too young to play with them. My aunt says that it won't be long before the baby is crawling and trying to talk. Babies are cute. I have seen pictures of myself when I was a baby, and it's hard to believe that I was once that small. A wedding. The church bells are ringing. I am inside the church, waiting for my cousin to walk down the aisle. Today is her wedding day. She is a bride. The organist is playing a song on the organ. We all stand up and watch my cousin walk down the aisle. She is arm in arm with her father. She is dressed in a long white dress and a veil. She looks so beautiful. She looks like a princess. The man who she is going to marry is standing at the front of the church. He is the groom. He looks nice too. He is wearing a suit and he has a flower in his lapel. The minister says words to the couple, which will make them man and wife. The bride and groom smile at each other, but they seem to be a little bit nervous. They give each other gold rings to wear to symbolize that they are married. They kiss each other and walk out of the church as the organist plays joyous music. Some of the people in the church cried at the wedding, but not because they were sad. Everyone in the church is very happy for the couple. A photographer takes pictures of the happy couple. We wish them well and look forward to the reception where we will have dinner and we will dance and have a good time until it is very late. The bride will throw her bouquet of flowers, and it is said whoever catches the bouquet will be the next bride. The next day, the bride and groom will leave for their honeymoon. My cousin and her husband are going to Mexico for their honeymoon. My dad. My dad is the man whom I respect the most in my life. He works very hard to make the money that supports us. My mother has a job too, and she also works very hard. My dad is the principal of a high school. He works at the school all day and often has to go to meetings at night. He deals with parents, students, and staff. There is always something that he has to deal with. He has a lot on his mind. It doesn't matter how much work my dad has to do. He always has time for my brothers, my sister, and me. If I go to him with a problem, he will sit down and discuss it with me. He doesn't yell. 
He is always very logical, and he tries to think of the best way to deal with things. My dad is a very patient man. Once I spilled some ink on papers that he was working on. I thought he would be mad, but he didn't get angry. He said it was okay. He takes time out to do things with us. He has taken my brother's fishing. He takes me to the arena to skate, and he helps my sister to write her essays and assignments. He always makes us laugh, and he makes us feel like we are very special to him. He is a very good father, and on Father's Day, I always buy him a card that tells him just how much he means to me. I think it is important to have good parents. I hope that when I have children, I will be a good parent like my parents are to me. Parents give children the foundation they need to live good lives. My mother. My mother does so many things. She has a job at a dress store. She cooks our meals. She cleans the house. She feeds the pets, and she still finds time to spend with us. My mother is always busy, but she says that her favorite time is time that she spends with us. My mother works from Monday to Friday. When she comes home from work, she makes something for supper. We usually do the dishes so that she won't have to do them. After supper, she helps us with our homework, or she sits down to watch television. Some nights she goes shopping, and she takes whoever wants to go with her. Mothers are a little bit of everything. My mother is like a teacher when she helps us with our homework. She is like a nurse when she looks after us all when we're ill. She is like a cook when she makes meals for us. She says that cleaning the house is her least favorite thing. She says that the house gets dirty again right after you clean it. She gets my father, my brothers, sister, and me to help her with the cleaning. My mother washes all our clothes, and sometimes she irons them if they need it. My mother says that there are not enough hours in a day. We try to help my mother as much as we can. There is a lot of work involved in keeping a home neat and organized. Most of my friends' mothers work. Mothers are the people who you go to when you need to be comforted. Mothers are the people who can make you feel better. I'm glad that I have the mother that I have. My mother is caring and funny. She is fun to be around. A surprise. Last Friday, my dad came home from work and said that he had a surprise for us. We tried to guess what the surprise might be. My brother guessed that we were going out for dinner. My dad said no. My other brother asked if my father had tickets to a hockey game. My dad said no. My sister asked if we were going on a trip. My dad said no. My mother knew what the surprise was, so she just stood and smiled at us. I guess that we might be getting a swimming pool. My dad said no.、Nope. We were getting very frustrated trying to guess what the surprise might be. My brother asked how big the surprise was. My dad said that the surprise was quite small. We were not sure what the surprise could be. Will we all like it? I asked. Yes, my dad replied. Every one of you will love this surprise. We heard a noise. It was a crying noise. Your surprise wants to see you, my dad said. He opened the door to the bedroom and a tiny puppy came running out. We were all very excited. Our surprise was a puppy. It was a little baby spaniel. The puppy loved all of us. She ran around and licked all of our faces. We had always wanted a dog. We take turns feeding the puppy and taking her out for walks. She is growing quickly and will soon be an adult dog. We all agree that the puppy was the nicest surprise my dad could have given us. Rhyming words. Sometimes my friends and I play a game. It's something we made up, so it doesn't have a name. We like to take words that rhyme. We put them together line by line. Do you get the picture now? We're playing the game, and this is how. I might say I like to drive a car. I really don't like to go very far. If I decide to take a walk, I'd go with a friend so that we could talk. Do you see that these lines rhyme? Play the game if you have the time. We could talk about school or even playing. Do you know what I am saying? Rhyming words is easy to do. It's fun for me. It can be fun for you. Just join in and say something, or make it into a song that you can sing. 
There are so many words that rhyme with others, like smile and mile, and mothers and brothers. I could spend all day just making up these things. I could let my imagination fly on wings, up to the clouds and back to my mind. There are so many rhymes that I can find. There are some words that are hard to find rhymes for. I don't use those words any more. I like to choose words that are easy to rhyme, like cat and bat, or lime and time. So give it a try. I know you'll have fun. I'll say goodbye. My rhyming is done. Homework. Sometimes my teacher gives us homework. I don't mind doing my homework except when the weather is really nice and all my friends are outside. On those nights, I'd rather be outside with them, so I try to get my homework done quickly. Tonight, I have some English homework. We have been reading a book. We have to read a chapter of the book and answer the questions at the end of the chapter. It is an interesting book, so the homework for this is quite easy. My math homework is not so easy. I have to do some addition and subtraction. I don't mind that, but there are some problems that need to be solved. The problems involve addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I am not too good with numbers. I need to work harder on my math. I just finished a project for history. I had to make a map of Canada with diagrams showing the routes of all the explorers. It was an interesting project because I have been to some of the places that the explorers went to. I don't have any science homework. At school, we are growing bean plants. We go in every day and see how the plants have grown. We write down all the changes that occur in the plant every day. The only other homework that I have is geography. I have a map of Canada, and I have to write the names of all the provinces and their capitals on it. It won't take me long to do that because I know all the provinces. When my homework is all done, I will go outside and play ball with my friends until it is time to come in. I am a good student. I get good marks because I like school. My favorite subjects are physical education, English, and history. Math is my least favorite subject, but I'm trying to improve my marks in that. Opposites. Some things are opposites of each other. The opposite of black is white. The opposite of happy is sad. If I am at the opposite side of the room from you, it means that I am at the other side of the room that you are on. The opposite of up is down, and the opposite of left is right. Do you know what the opposite of young would be? Old is the opposite of young. What is the opposite of dirty? Clean is the opposite of dirty. Big is the opposite of small. Man is the opposite of woman. Boy is the opposite of girl. Sometimes people think the opposite things than other people. Someone might be wrong, and someone might be right. The opposite of mother is father. See if you can think of some opposites. It is cold in the winter, and it is hot in the summer. My father is very tall. And my brother is very short. A rock is hard, but a pillow is soft. An ocean is deep, but a puddle is shallow. I might tell the truth, but I might tell a lie. All of these things are opposites. The morning is bright, but the night is dark. A feather is light, but an elephant is heavy. Sugar is sweet, but a lemon is sour. A jet plane is fast, but a turtle is slow. I can go out in the day, or I can go out at night. I might love to swim, or I might hate to swim. It is interesting to see how many opposites you can think up. I could say hello, but I think it's time to say goodbye. The smart paper boy. In my town, there is a paper boy who just got an award for his actions. This boy delivered the local newspaper every morning. One of the people to whom he delivered the paper was an elderly man. This man lived alone. The paper boy had often spoken to the man, so he knew that the man lived alone. The paper boy always left the newspaper in the man's mailbox. One morning, the boy noticed that the man had not picked up his newspaper or his mail from the day before. The boy felt that something was not right. 
All day at school, the boy had a feeling that something might be wrong with the man. After school, the boy went back to the man's house to see if he had taken his mail and newspapers. The newspapers and mail were still in the mailbox. The boy knocked on the man's door. He could hear a faint voice, but could not hear what the person was saying. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. The boy knew that something wasn't right, so he went home and called the police station. He explained to the police that the man lived alone. He gave the address of the man's house to the police. The police knocked on the door, and they also heard the faint voice. The police got into the house and found the man lying at the bottom of the stairs. The man had fallen and broken his hip. The man had not been able to get up. He had been afraid that nobody would find him. He was very grateful to the paper boy for caring enough to get the police. The boy got an award. The man said the boy was a hero. The police said that the boy was an example of a very good citizen. The paper boy and the man are very good friends. The man will never forget what the paper boy did for him. Niagara Falls. I live in Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a famous place. A lot of tourists visit here every year. Most of the tourists come to see the waterfalls. The waterfalls are very beautiful and powerful. At night, they shine lights on the falls that make them even more dramatic. Tourists line up against the railings to watch the water as it tumbles into the Niagara River. There are other things in Niagara Falls that the tourists like to visit. There are a lot of gift shops and museums. There are many hotels that the tourists can stay at. Tourism is very important to Niagara Falls. Many people work in the tourism industry. There are many jobs in the tourism industry. You can take a special bus and tour Niagara Falls. You can ride in a horse-drawn carriage in Niagara on the Lake, or you can take a balloon ride over the falls from the American side. You can even ride in a helicopter over the falls. Niagara Falls is very busy in the summertime. Summer is the time when most tourists visit here. Sometimes the tourists think it's raining near the falls, but it is only the mist that rises from the mighty waterfalls. There are many legends and stories connected to Niagara Falls. There is a special legend called the Maid of the Mist. There are stories about the daredevils who thought that they were more powerful than the falls. Some of them went over the falls in barrels, and others walked on tight ropes over the falls. Both of those things are very dangerous. I stay behind the railings when I look at the falls. I know just how powerful the falls are. It is interesting to discover all the stories that there are about Niagara Falls. The library. One of my favorite places is the library. I go there to get books for school, and I go there to get books for pleasure. I often read mysteries for fun. In the summer, I read lots of mysteries. I like to sit outside and read. In the winter, I have to read books for school. I go to the library to find out things for my projects. I often use the dictionary and the atlas. Some of my friends go with me, and we sit at the tables and do our homework. We can't make a lot of noise in the library. People have to be quiet when they are in a library. When I first went to the library, I was confused about how to find books. The librarian showed me how to use the computer to find books. Now I am able to do all my research myself. I have read some very interesting books. I have learned a lot from library books. I always bring the books back on time so I don't get a fine. I am collecting books at home. People often give me books for gifts. Soon I will have my own library. Reading is a good hobby. Everyone in my family likes to read. The library has other things besides books. There are videos at the library. 
There are also compact discs at the library. I have a library card, so I can get books, videos, or compact discs whenever I want to. My mother sometimes goes to the library to look at the magazines. She gets some good recipes from the magazines. My father looks for books on how to build things. He is building some bookshelves for me at the moment. He found the instructions in a book. My little brother reads children's books. He likes books about trains. I have liked books ever since I was very small. My mother says that reading is a good habit to get into. When I grow up, I have been thinking about what I'd like to be when I grow up. There are so many choices. I could be a principal like my father. I could be a teacher. I like animals. Maybe I should be a veterinarian. My cat just went to the veterinarian to get her shots. I don't think my cat was too happy to be there. I could be a farmer and grow vegetables. Maybe I could be a doctor and cure people. If I was good enough, I could be a famous sports person or a singer. I could be an actor on television or in the movies. Maybe I would like to be a policeman or a fireman. I could rescue people. I can play the piano. Maybe I should be a musician. I could be a lawyer. I sometimes watch shows about lawyers defending people. Lawyers have to be able to speak well. I could be a carpenter and work with wood, or I could be a welder and work with metal. There are just so many jobs. I could work in a restaurant. I could cook food, or I could serve food. I could be an airline pilot or the captain of a ship. I could be a repairman or an artist. The world is full of jobs. Some of the jobs require a lot of education. Some require a little bit of training, and some require a lot of training. It's all up to me. I can be whatever I want to be.